Imagine a moonlit night, a fearless gang of outlaws, and a daring heist that would forever etch its name in the annals of criminal history. It's the night of August 8, 1963, when a group of criminal masterminds set their sights on the Royal Mail Train, a locomotive carrying a staggering $50 million in priceless treasures. Little did they know, their meticulously planned operation would unfold into an intense manhunt spanning many years. This is the extraordinary tale of the Great Train Robbery, where $50 million vanished in a matter of seconds. Stay tuned, because this story will keep you on the edge of your seat until the very end. The story begins months before the robbery, when the gang had begun to study every facet of the train route. They knew it inside and out, including its timetables, security measures, and crew routines. At the helm of this audacious plan was Bruce Reynolds, a seasoned criminal mastermind. He'd assembled a crew of like-minded individuals, each handpicked for their unique skills and unwavering nerve. Among them were Ronald Buster Edwards, a charming and nimble thief known for his agility, and Gordon Goody, a man with an uncanny ability to forge documents. With a pot of tea, and a sheaf of blueprints spread across the table. The gang began plotting their daring heist. They had set their sights on the Royal Mail train traveling between Glasgow and London, a seemingly impenetrable fortress of cash and valuables. The plan was audacious, but it was also brilliantly simple. They would use a fake signal to halt the train in a remote location far from prying eyes. To access the mail carriages, they devised a contraption they affectionately called the Robber's Bridge, a metal walkway that would extend from the railway bridge to the train itself. During the course of many months, the gang honed their plan with military precision. They rehearsed every step, down to the second, knowing that any mistake could spell disaster. As tension built among the gang members in the final days of planning, they knew that the night of the robbery would be their make-or-break moment. And finally, that moment had come, and the night of the robbery arrived with an air of tension that clung to the gang like a second skin. Their meticulously crafted plan was about to be put into motion. As the gang members donned dark clothing and equipped themselves with tools and weapons, the moon hung low in the sky, casting an eerie, silvery glow on the deserted railway tracks. In the distance, the faint rumble of an approaching train echoed through the night. It was the Royal Mail Train, a behemoth of steel and cargo hurtling through the darkness. Unaware of the impending danger soon to come, the gang gathered near the remote spot they had chosen, one that would provide them with the cover of isolation. As the train approached, a shiver of anticipation ran through the gang. They had cut the communication wires, plunging the area into silence. The first crucial step was to halt the train. And so Ronnie Biggs, a burly and imposing figure, stood by the tracks, ready to spring into action. He raised a red signal light high above his head, creating a deceptive illusion of a signalman ahead. The locomotive's brakes screeched to life, and the train came to a grinding halt. Inside, the train crew, oblivious to the perilous situation, radioed for assistance believing they had encountered a routine stoppage. But the gang was one step ahead of them and had expertly jammed their communications, rendering them powerless to call for help. The gang's precision was remarkable. As the train slowed to a stop, another member of the crew, known as the Ulsterman, disconnected the train's communication system, severing any chance of an emergency signal being sent. Meanwhile, other gang members, their faces hidden behind masks, descended upon the train with swift and ruthless precision. With the train crew subdued and the train isolated in the dark, the gang turned their attention to the mail carriages. It was time to bridge the gap between the railway bridge and their target. The robber's bridge was lowered into place, a nerve-wracking task that had been practiced countless times. Bruce Reynolds, the mastermind, led the way. With a mixture of excitement and anxiety, he stepped onto the swaying bridge, taking each step with utmost care. The entire operation hinged on this narrow metal walkway suspended in the void. Thankfully for them it worked, and one by one, the gang members followed, 
clutching bags and containers ready to be filled with the treasures that lay within the train. Once inside the mail carriages, the gang worked swiftly. They knew they had only a matter of minutes to empty the vaults. The safes, heavy and imposing, seemed like impenetrable fortresses, yet with a blend of skill and determination, they cracked open the safes, revealing the secret treasure that lay within. Stacks of banknotes, bundles of valuable bonds, and sacks bursting with coins and jewels gleamed in the dim light. The gang's eyes widened with amazement and greed as they realized the magnitude of their haul. It was a fortune beyond their wildest dreams. The sum of their stolen treasure was staggering. In today's currency, the stolen loot amounted to over $50 million. But in 1963, it was the equivalent of roughly $2.6 million, a sum that would forever change the lives of the daring robbers and those who had entrusted the Royal Mail train with their wealth. As the gang members made their escape back across the bridge, clutching their stolen treasure, a sense of triumph and adrenaline coursed through their veins. They had pulled off the perfect crime, or so they thought. As they made their escape with the stolen treasure, they had no idea that an even greater challenge lay ahead, one that would push them to their limits. Just moments after their departure, the authorities unleashed a relentless pursuit by law enforcement, sparking one of history's most gripping manhunts. As the gang hastily retreated, they executed their well-planned escape, mapping out every detail. Their path to safety followed a carefully chosen route, avoiding major roads and populous areas. In stolen vehicles, they drove away from the crime scene, their engines thundering through the silent night. Fake license plates stood ready to confound any pursuit, but their escape strategy went beyond speed and stealth. The gang was determined to cover their tracks and mislead authorities. Leaving no stone unturned, they used strategically placed hideouts. Their primary safe house, located within a farmhouse, was meticulously destroyed in a blazing inferno to erase any incriminating evidence. Inside their hideouts, gang members watched the media's reports with bated breath, knowing they hadn't yet been connected to the crime. To sow confusion, they left misleading evidence at some hideouts, diverting the investigation away from their true identities. The gang's evasion tactics included multiple vehicle switches with the purpose of confusing the authorities. Their knowledge of the English countryside and extensive planning gave them a critical edge. As police closed in, the gang's adrenaline-fueled cunning allowed them to elude pursuers. Over time, their escape became legendary, one that would baffle and infuriate law enforcement. The stolen loot remained hidden in secret locations known only to a select few, ensuring the fortune's inaccessibility. Their audacious cover-up tactics added complexity to their gripping tale of criminal ingenuity and daring escape. But as time passed, the law enforcement net tightened around the infamous Great Train Robbery Gang. The audacious criminals were tracked down one by one, leading to a game of cat and mouse that spanned over many years. Bruce Reynolds, the mastermind, was among the first to be apprehended, receiving a 25-year prison sentence. Ronnie Biggs, a pivotal figure, managed to evade capture for years, even becoming a folk hero in Brazil. He eventually returned to the UK, serving 30 years in prison before release on compassionate grounds due to failing health. Other gang members, like Buster Edwards and Gordon Goody, were also captured, receiving lengthy prison sentences. But what about the stolen $2.6 million? It tantalized both the public and law enforcement, and despite efforts, only a fraction was ever recovered. Some found buried while the majority remained hidden, lost to time. In a bizarre twist, a portion of the stolen money was discovered years later, forgotten in a hidden farmhouse compartment. This added intrigue to the saga, hinting at the gang's meticulous planning and ability to keep secrets. But there is one question that has yet to be answered. What drives individuals to undertake such daring and perilous acts? Is it the pursuit of wealth, the thrill of the chase, or a desire for notoriety that leads them down the road of crime? Perhaps in the story of these audacious criminals, we find a mirror to our own ambitions, a reflection of the human spirit's boundless capacity for audacity and cunning.
So as you ponder the legend of the great train robbery, ask yourself, what would you risk for the ultimate prize? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed, click on one of these videos to indulge in more thought-provoking content. Until next time, stay curious, for the world is full of captivating stories waiting to be uncovered.